Hey, I've been training my wife to do her first pull up for a few weeks. Recently, I came across a video where Sean shares her story of going from 0 to 5 pull ups. I thought that was super inspiring, so I reached out to her to talk more about it. Thank you so much, Strong, for joining us. For the pull up, I want to start with the motivation. When people are learning the muscle up, it's very obvious why they are motivated to learn a muscle up. But for people that are learning the pull up, sometimes they lack motivation. And if, when they don't have motivation, they don't train consistently. When they don't train consistently, they don't see results. And when they don't see results, they further lose motivation. So there's kind of like a vicious cycle that they fall into. So can you tell the audience what is your motivation when you learn the pull up? I think what you described sounds really familiar to me. That's pretty much a lot of what I've experienced before my pull up journey. I wasn't a regular gym goer at all up until last year. And being able to do a pull up was never ever on my list of goals just because it sounded too far fetched. In terms of exercises and sports, I never really stuck to one thing for longer than two weeks. And talking about goals and motivation I actually had a long term goal which is losing weight. Quick disclaimer, I don't think she was heavy nor required to lose weight, but everyone has different standards for themselves. Please respect that. I'm calling it long term, not because I had a rigid plan. It was more because it was a goal that I set when I was even in like middle school, high school. And I always wanted to, oh, I want to lose weight. What if I lose like 10 more pounds and I'm going to fit in my dresses better? But I just never ever really had the real motivation to drive myself to put any efforts into it. I have done stupid things like signing up for a whole year of gym membership in January. And like only went there twice. <laughs> Something funny was in 2016 I got engaged and I had nine months to plan for my wedding so I told myself okay Sean all those previous times you had so many goals about fitness you said you wanted to lose weight you all failed because you didn't have a strong enough motivation that's why you always went back to sitting on the couch eating potato chips after a few times of trying it but this time you're about to get married you're about to have the most beautiful day of your life you gotta try hard if this is not a motivation then what would it be? So I had nine months of trying to lose weight. And then what happened was those nine months just passed by. And I think I showed up on my wedding actually a little heavier than I was before. <laughs> so yeah, after the wedding, I was really depressed thinking maybe I just don't have the determination. Maybe I'm just not one of those very disciplined people. I was like that up until last year. The turning point was really I went to a climbing gym with a few co-workers all of a sudden got really hooked into it. Even though I was probably the weakest person in the gym, for some reason, I could help onto some of the easiest boulder problems and I could finish a few. That gave me a lot of validation. So I kept going and going and it went past my two-week trial period for any other sports. And I really just paid the membership and I showed up three times a week regularly ever since then. For this sport, all you're facing is yourself and only you. You're like on that wall and you're about to make a move, I start questioning myself a lot in moments like that. What if I fall is kind of far and a lot of doubts would happen in my mind when I was climbing. But it's actually those doubts and fear that have taught me to be stronger and to be mentally more independent and to be braver. When you're climbing, you're just facing the fear of your own. You either admit that you suck or you just push through it. And the moment when you get it after tries and tries it's just so rewarding that experience was something totally new to me but i was just very impressed to feel that kind of feeling as a beginner like after even a few months into the sport it was really amazing to see all the strong climbers flying around on the walls in the gym and i was like wow to be that strong what do i need normally climbers the finger strings or footwork are like the most important things but really for beginner climbers you gotta have strong arms to bring you to a certain level and then you unlock things and then you worry about finger strains and other stuff. So in order to have those strong arms, it seems like pull-ups are a good way to measure it. So that's how I set up a motivation for trying to do my first pull-up. I really wanted to become stronger and climb better. 
So do you remember when you first test your pull up in the climbing gym? How far away are you from your first pull up? I did that when I first joined the gym. There was a assisted pull up machine, as I could measure. Oh, like if I could pull forty eight pounds more, then I can do my first pull up. So basically, about forty percent of my body weight. Wow. So that starting point is actually quite. Far. I believe a lot of viewers and you guys are, will be a lot closer than where Sean is. So how did you actually train and how long does it take for you to actually overcome that 48 pounds? The most important thing is actually just climbing. To be frank, I didn't really do any extra strength exercise because I joined the climbing gym mostly wanting to have fun climbing. I was there three days a week and the progress was really fast. It was way faster than I expected. At the end of the session, I would try myself on that assisted pull up machine and to check what is the least weight I need to pull myself up. A few weeks later, I only needed 36 pounds. Another few weeks passed by 24, 18, 12. Okay, wait, wait, wait. When you say few weeks, I'm pretty sure the viewers will want to know. Is it like one week or is it nine weeks? What is few weeks. I don't remember the exact date of each data point, but I do remember that from 48 pounds to zero pounds, it took me roughly two months. So it was quite surprising knowing like where I started and how little arm strength I had. That's super fast. Yeah, and that's also actually my experience. Before I started climbing, I believe I can do maybe two or three. But after I start climbing and then climb for a few years, I never really test my max pull-ups and all of a sudden I can do 10 plus. So guys, Rock climbing really is the solution. For people that don't have access to a climbing gym, or maybe they are just not interested in climbing, do you have any suggestions for them on how to train their first pull up? Mentally, you can prepare for it by breaking down your goal to some smaller goals. For every single small milestone I made, I celebrated it. If I hit 24 or 36, I deserve something. Another thing I want to share is think about something bigger than that goal. I found that if there is a bigger goal behind this more granular goal, then you won't give up that easily. If you are interested in a specific training plan that doesn't involve climbing, my wife is not a climber and I'm in the middle of training her to get her first pull up. So definitely stay tuned for that. Can you tell the audience who are still working on their first pull up? What does it feel like to finally get your first pull up? To be honest, I was quite surprised. I was like, was that it? Did I really do that? And then after that, more importantly, I think it just gave me a lot of confidence. I started trusting myself and trusting my body. I was not that weak-willed girl a few years ago. If I set my mind to something, I can actually do it. So the meaning of my first pull-up actually went beyond the first pull-up itself. It just made me think, if I can do this, then I can do a lot of things. I kind of let to my journey of trying to push further and further, doing my second and third. Now I can do eight pull-ups in a row. Um, so that's, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm quite happy about the progress I've made in the last year. That's motivating, guys. Climbing has changed me so much that I even started my own climbing channel on YouTube. It's called Climbing Whispers or GM Pianyu, if you understand Mandarin. Although there are like plenty of good climbing content on YouTube that's in English, there was almost zero in Mandarin. Climbing as a sport in China just began to get popular. I was like, how can I help those beginners like me to get more access to climbing tips? That that's how it motivated me to start this channel. Yeah, and basically I really want to connect the Mandarin speaking climbing community. As we all know, the climbing market is small, but the Mandarin speaking climbing market is microscopic. I have great respect for people like Shuang, having the pioneer mindset to venture into a practically non-existent market and attempt to grow it from scratch. So if you happen to know Mandarin, definitely check her out. And if you don't, if you just want to support the climbing community in general, also check her out. I did another collab video on her channel. And if you are curious about me speaking Mandarin, you should definitely check the video out here.